Thanks for dropping in. We were able to go on a farm tour this past weekend, Sheraton Park Farms out of Greensboro, North Carolina, ran by Chuck and Sandra. They opened it up to a small group of uh, people. We were able to check out their operation on 32 acres, uh, chickens and sheep, goats, pigs, uh, turkeys. So lots of stuff to see. Chuck had lots of good information. Uh, broke it up into two different videos because there was so much footage I shot. I tried to cut it down a lot, but there were lots of times he was really felt like he was giving some good info that that uh, everyone would like. So this is part one. See you next time. Thanks. Well, y'all, we'll get started. Um, it's a couple minutes after one. Um, first off, we appreciate y'all coming out. This is our first time doing this, so we ask for a little bit of a little bit of grace if we if we stumble on something but we really appreciate y'all coming out um what we wanted to do is we really wanted to open the farm up so folks can kind of see where their food's coming from um you know nowadays i know a lot of folks uh, are living in neighborhoods and cities and areas where you just don't have access to a lot of animals so we wanted to want the folks to have an opportunity to come out and see some critters and bring the kids if you've got a camera we encourage you to take all the pictures you want to take um we'll have an opportunity for the kids to you know pet and touch as much as they want as much as we can let them you know like baby piglets it's impossible to catch a baby piglet if we pick one of those things up it's going to start squealing and we're going to have an issue with a mama pig and that's not going to be good for anybody um <clears throat> this is a working farm um there are fences here assume that the fence is hot 90 percent of them are we got uh, one or two fences that don't have any juice on but that means electrifying the fence is hot. watch your step we do have um you know potholes and trip hazards and hoses stretched and that kind of thing but uh we just want y'all to enjoy yourselves um ask any questions that you've got we'll kind of talk about what we do and how we do things here and uh again if you've got any questions just just jump in there and, and ask us um son and i bought this farm about four years ago now we bought this in june of 17. We came here with basically zero agricultural experience outside of just keeping a few bees. What we do here, we've learned to do Sounds with familiar. books and YouTube and <laughs> seminars and that kind of thing. So we're, we're fairly green at it, but we've had this pretty steep trajectory on what we've done. We started out with six pigs. Right now there's about 70 pigs on this farm. There's a little over 400 chickens, some turkeys, some goats, some sheep. I mean, we've got a, we've got a whole bunch of different stuff going on. So. Um, we're sitting on 20 acres. We own 20 acres here that the farm is on. We lease an additional 12 that's just next door. So we're actually farming about about 32 acres. I've got some property on the back side of the creek down there that we don't do a whole lot with. But overall, we've got, uh, we've got 32 acres here. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna walk down and look at some baby chicks. We've got some baby chicks in the brooder. So we'll go down and take a look at those and talk about them. Um, as we walk down, we'll walk by the apiary where we've got, where we've got our honeybees. So y'all can see those. We're gonna walk over there. We don't want anybody get, don't want anybody to get stung, but uh, we'll walk down to the brooder and take a look at it, and uh, then we'll go out and see the rest of the farm. All right. All right. I want to see piggies. You want to see piggies? Yeah, I want to see doggies. Okay. I'm excited to see piggies. Piglets. They're gonna be a joy. You think so? Yeah. You want pigs on our farm? Yes. 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 Well, they've got sheep here too. Do they have painting goats? Do they have painting goats? We process those birds here. And whenever we do, there's a little bit of waste product. The blood, the intestines, the feathers, and that kind of thing. We compost all of that using fresh wood chips that we get from a tree service. So we compost that in the wood chips, stir that a couple of times, and then at the end of the year, we put that out on our garden. So this is compost here that's finished. So nothing, none of our animals, nothing here goes to waste. We try to re, we try to make use of everything that we possibly can. We'll even, you know, if we have a, if we have an animal that, you know, doesn't make it for some reason, like a baby piglet or something like that, we'll actually compost those as well. And believe it or not, at the end of the year, very rarely do we find anything. Maybe a little bit of a leg bone or something like that. But those, we're able to compost all that. So those animals continue to be part of the farm, even though they may not make it all the way to adulthood. But every day these chicks get checked, feed, water, we refresh their shavings, we make sure that the lamps are on so that they can stay warm. Once these birds fully feather out, they've got all their feathers, they're much more cold tolerant uh, than they are right now. The younger they are, the more heat, the more um, temp the more control that we have to have over the, over the temperature. 
So these are like the Red Rangers or so something like that? There, I've got a couple different breeds. Over on the left hand side, these are Freedom Ranger Color Yields. Um, and over here on the right hand side, I've got 55 Jackies and 25 Kosher King. Kosher King. All of these on the right are roosters. All the ones over on the left, they're half and half. They're half roosters, half hens. Okay. There's a chicken named after me. <laughs> We've had a lot of folks that are interested in buying live roosters to process on at home for themselves mm. as a you know part of their ethnicity, an ethnic diet. Right. And so we started raising some roosters out to sell so that we can sell folks just a live rooster if they want. <laughs> so this is Fred. And this is Barney. So these are a couple of uh, these are a couple of male goats. Uh, these are my tonic. These are fainting goats. Oh god. Um, and they're. We, we're kind of learning about goats. These are these are two that we're just starting with. Um, we've learned that there's different levels of faintingness. <laughs> and these guys are yeah, y'all come up and hit them. These guys are not very um, they're not very skittish. And I understand that the more that you uh, the more that you work with them, handle them, touch them, spend time with them, the less likely they are to get that stiffness that they fall over. Um, so. Both of these are males. Uh, we are going to leave them intact. We're going to get us some females and do a little bit of a breeding operation and start raising some goats for uh, meat. Goat meat is actually the number one consumed red meat in the world. See beef. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start venturing into the meat business. Just a little bit. We're just getting started on this. <laughs> yeah. So we do it. We use a milk replacer. We just get it in a like tractor supply. Excuse me. Yeah. And so they're on milk now. We're working to wean them off, and then they'll go on to get this 100% grass. They'll get a little bit of grain in the winter time. And hay. So goats are a good companion animal to go with our sheep. Sheep tend to eat from the shoulder down. Goats tend to eat from the shoulder up. So whenever we put them into a heavy brush area, the goats will kind of clear that uh, the brush out, and they're fantastic at clearing land. Grass growing as we can, so we use the chickens and the goats and the sheep to help raise to help grow grass. When we first bought this farm, this field that you're standing on now was hard pan packed dirt, wouldn't grow a thing. It had, had corn, wheat, soy, tobacco raised on it. It was devoid of all life. I mean, there just was nothing here. We ran the pigs across it a couple of times and let them stir it up, fluff it up, and kind of rejuvenate. You will see that kind of thing on a farm too. Um, kind of stir it up, rejuvenate that lake and seed bank, and then we ran the chickens across it. All the grass that you see growing here, we've not planted the first grass seed or put the first bit of chemical fertilizer on that, and this is three years worth of work. Just a good spread of natural fertilizer without ever having to go to the feed store and spend, you know, 10 or 15 bucks a bag of fertilizer. We just let the chickens do, do it for us. And you did, and I understand you, you did not uh, catch the grass seed. No, ma'am. There's been no grass seed whatsoever. Where did it come from? So, the grass seed, there's seed that's in the soil that's waiting for the right environment to grow in. Whenever you're planting, when you continue to till and put all kinds of roundup and weed control and that kind of stuff down, that's not an environment for that grass seed to grow. We took that stuff off, we put the pigs on and let them stir it up, start to put, so put, put some manure down, mm -hmm. run the chickens across it. That creates that environment for that seed to start to germinate. So it's always there. Mm -hmm. We just have to create the environment for it. Mm -hmm. You only have to fill the bucket instead of coming out and having to take the feet <coughs> water in and all that every day. That's smart. I'm about to get in the game on that. Now we just fill the buckets. Yeah, that'll be happening soon. Don't y'all worry about that. So this is our egg laying flock. And what we do with these chickens here is we follow along behind where our sheep have been. And so a few days ago we had a group of sheep right here. And now we've brought the chickens in. And what the chickens will do is they'll start to pick through that, that sheep manure and spread it around and spread it out and start eating the fly larvae out of it. So they help us control our fly population. And they also kind of spread that manure back out. Very similar to what Joel Southland does with his pasture sanitation <laughs> Process, pro program. So these birds <clears throat> scatter that out and then they give us a lot of eggs in return. If you kind of look back here behind, so where you're standing right now, is this is the circle that these birds were in a couple of days ago. Directly behind that is the circle they were in a, about a week before that. <clears throat> you can see how that grass starts coming back up, thick, lush. Same principle that we're doing with these egg chickens over here and the meat chickens. 
we move them along to spread that manure out so we get more grass growing and manure for us then, then doesn't become a, a liability it's an asset for us and we try to use it in a in an effective way a lot of these girls here are new egg layers we got them back in uh, the first of november so they're now just getting to the egg laying stage um, there's about 200 chickens in here all together. There's some up in the coop, under the coop, just kind of scattered out and about. How much feed are they going through a day versus, they, I guess they supplement some from Yeah, so the grass. question is how much feed do they go through per day? I'm not sure exactly how much they go through per day, but we put about 400 pounds on them about every week and a half. Okay. One thing that we've noticed is that feed consumption goes down whenever we move them to a new spot. Makes sense. They get, they have more forages, more stuff to, to scratch around and pick from. How long do they lay eggs? Chicken lay an egg about once a day. About once a day. We have some. There are some breeds in here that kind of the egg production decreases whenever we get into the winter time. Chickens lay eggs based on the amount of sunlight that there is. We've also got some chickens in here that lay about 300, 330 eggs per year that are much higher producers. Hmm. This is coyotes, raccoons, and that kind of thing. And those animals absolutely love everything eats chicken. Everything eats chicken. So the fence is primarily to keep the predators out more so than it is to keep the chickens in. Have you had much problem with the aerial predators? Yes, we have had a lot of problems with hawks. We have a lot of problems with hawks, particularly in uh, winter and early spring, whenever they're uh, whenever they're hatching their their chicks out. We do have a uh, Chinese gander goose coming, and he's going to be our guard goose for this morning. The lumber is from a local sawmill. Uh, little guy's got just a you know a portable sawmill down there. He cut the lumber for us, so it's all um, sourced from local materials. And we built this to accommodate up to 300, 350 chickens. Okay. And we're, we're at about two thirds capacity right now. Awesome. Awesome. Step inside? Okay, go inside. That, this is cool. Whoa. This is a cool I know I couldn't. How much hassle is it cleaning the eggs? Or do y'all even wash? I don't, I don't wash eggs. Okay. <clears throat> so the question was how much of a hassle is it to wash eggs? We don't wash eggs. So what we do every night, we come out and we gather the eggs and we close these roosts up so that the chickens can't sleep where they lay their eggs. Chickens will poo where they sleep. Hmm. So we close our nesting boxes up so they can't get in there and sleep. And so what we get in exchange is we get perfectly clean eggs. I'll grab one to show you here in a second. Okay. Every once in a while we'll get one that's got a little bit of chicken poo on it, but we don't have nasty, dirty eggs. Okay. When a chicken lays an egg, they put a mucus coating on it called the bloom. And what that bloom does is it coats that egg because an egg is porous and it prevents bacteria from getting in through the shell and the, and the contents of the egg evaporate now. If you don't wash that bloom off, you don't have to refrigerate those eggs. So our eggs are fine out on a counter for three or four weeks or you can take them home, put them in the refrigerator and they're good for seven or eight. Wow. Most eggs that you buy in the grocery store anyway is about 30 days old, generally speaking. <laughs> so fresh, clean eggs makes a big difference. And so another thing that we've got, we don't, so we don't have to come out and feed every day. We built a uh, self-contained feeder on the front, so we just put about 400 pounds of feed in this thing once every 10 days or so. The chickens can access it from the inside, it stays dry. Oh, cool. Yeah, I saw you probably did. I'm hoping there's about 60 in there. <laughs> So another thing that we done, we built a poop through floor. Um, so it's a slatted floor, we don't have to clean it up. It's self-cleaning. John Tyler, come look at the eggs. So these are un these are unwashed eggs. Wow. Right out right out of the coop. I mean they're not I mean they're no poop at all on. Perfectly clean. Oh, that's awesome. That was one of my worries. It's like how are we gonna clean all these, you know. Yeah. You see people washing their eggs. Yes. Yeah. So if you'll just if you'll close those nest boxes up at night, so the chickens can't sleep in there. That's what you, every once in a while you get an egg that's got right. a little poo on it. But I mean, <clears throat> that's 95% of our eggs are perfectly clean. Wow. What's the different colors? <clears throat> so different breeds of chickens lay different colors of eggs. There is absolutely zero difference in the in the contents of the eggs. It's all in the shell color. It's a pigment. That's part you know, it's in the So a chicken will always lay the same color right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, white egg white egg layers will lay whites, greens will lay greens, browns will lay browns, yeah. No chicken. <laughs> I 
Look, come on, I sound like one of my children. Yeah, somebody, somebody, I, th I think a chicken just, just scared just, the head just all the way out. Scared it out. Was that Kenzie? Did Kenzie he's scare the, the chicken? Oh, That's my favorite. Ice cream. Well, he's got the head. She's not the one who's having You want to see the head? Don't drop it. You want to see the head? Hand it back. Hand it back, Ivy. Give it back. Give it back. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, John. Thank you. So then they'll fly, yeah, they'll fly right up to that. Yeah. We've got some wild chickens out the property eating bugs and stuff. Oh, yeah. They fly up in the trees and right. So that has been the biggest time saver of anything I've ever done. I was gonna say, it's got to so, float. I'm yep, sure. it's all it is. It's just it's just a just a cheap bowl from Tractor Supply with a float valve. Um, we just run it to a hose. Over here on the right, these these are egg laying chickens. They're juvenile birds that are just not to uh, egg laying age yet. Over the next couple of days, they're going to come out of uh, these tractors and they'll go into the coop. Uh, and we'll start training them in with the big birds to go in at night, stay inside the fence, and all that kind of thing. But for right now, um, they're just kind of hanging out in their own little in their own little tractor. Is that a lot of work getting them trained to go in at night? No. So whenever we whenever we put chickens in these in this egg mobile, what we'll do is we'll put them in there, we'll close them up, and we'll leave them closed up inside that thing for 24 hours. We won't let them out. Hmm. Then we'll let them out, um, and then they'll have kind of range of the day, do what they want to do, and then that night we'll go out and make sure that all those birds go back up in that coop. Because the first night, there's going to be a bunch of these birds that are not going to go in. So we'll go out that first night, pick them up, pitch them back in, get them in there. Next morning, they'll come out. Following night, we'll go out. There will be some more birds out. Not as many as they were that first night, but there will still be some birds out. And we'll do that every night until all those birds go back up into that coop. If you miss one night, it will take you 10 days to catch up for that one night that you miss. So it's wow. important that whenever you put them out and you're trying to train them to go in at night, you've got to keep going back every night to make sure those birds go back up in that coop. So we come out, we'll bring a lawn chair, we'll sit down, we'll wait till dark, and then we'll start acting like a bunch of crazy people chasing these chickens around. <laughs> chasing these chickens around. Yeah. Do the, you want them to do the behavior. And then right behind me, we've got a few turkeys. Um, we do turkeys all, we do tur turkeys basically all year long. We get our first batch of turkeys as turkey poults, just little day old fuzzballs, uh, typically around um, the Valentine's Day uh, date. They come out, we raise these turkeys out. These, these guys here will become either turkey breasts, legs, wings, thighs, or ground turkey. We have a lot of folks that, that enjoy ground turkey. Initially, there were 30 birds in this batch. Um, there was a delay at the post office. Whenever we, whenever we got them, there were five dead in the box, and then another 15 died over the course of the next 24 hours. So we ended up losing two-thirds of that batch to begin with. We do turkeys all year, and then we also do fresh turkeys for Thanksgiving. We'll get our Thanksgiving turkeys in middle of August. Um, and then we process those Thanksgiving turkeys the weekend before Thanksgiving so that you can get a fresh Thanksgiving turkey. What you don't, what a lot of folks don't know is that um, Butterball could process turkeys today and as long as they don't freeze that turkey below 29 degrees, they can sell it at Thanksgiving as a fresh bird. So we have truly, whenever it comes Thanksgiving time, we have truly fresh birds and not this. Thing that the USDA is kind of blessed is something that it's not. Do you have any plans to hatch out any? <clears throat> so we've, we've because all the bra it. everyone's we, on bronze yeah, this we, year. Yeah, we've talked about that. <coughs> we, we've not bought an incubator, right. um, but it is something that it not yet. It is something <laughs> we're, we're, we're thinking on that too. Yeah, it, it is something we're thinking about. Thanksgiving turkeys as they cook in half the time of a store bought. Mm -hmm. so if, you, if you've got a 20 pound turkey fast, that takes you 16 yeah. hours yeah. in an oven, it's going to take you half that amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> turkeys, turkeys are actually better fertilizers than the chickens are, and we think that's because their manure is more mineralized. Turkeys eat a lot of grit, and a, a, a bird has to take grit or small pieces of gravel into its um, into its crop to help grind up the grass that it eats or any feed that it eats. Turkeys use a lot more grit than the chickens do, so what we find is that we get a lot thicker, lusher, more green grass where the turkeys have been than we do where the chickens have been. And usually what we'll do, this is just a super small batch, much smaller than what we normally have, 
these turkeys would be out in netting like this with this tractor for shelter, and they would just get out in free range during the day. Uh, but since it's just a small batch, we just left them in the tractor just because of predator issues. All right. Who'd you build or buy that tractor? So, buddy of mine built this as a prototype, um, and now he's building them. Uh, he's got some for sale. He's down in Ashburg. If you're interested, I'll be glad to get you contact information. But yeah, he's building these. So we've got a number of these tractors here. These are called Suskovich style tractors. We like them for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're easy to move. They're fairly lightweight. And number two, I can get in there and catch birds because I'm not 20 years old and I don't want to get down on the ground and scoot them out of a, uh, something that's much shorter. These are easy to manage. If there's a sick bird or something, we can get in there, care for the bird. We can manage feed, water, super lightweight, you know, 10 or 12 year old kid can move these things. I mean, these things are super easy to move every day. And every day, these birds come forward. They come off of their manure onto fresh grass where they can forage for bugs and worms and eat grass and greenery and that kind of thing. Chickens and turkeys actually will eat a lot more, a lot more greenery than you think they would. They, they, they munch down on the grass. And two thirds of those turkeys normal or was that like a No, 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 year? that is totally abnormal. That was, that was the delay because the, po the post office delayed. Those birds, we didn't get them in a brooder where they could get warm and get fed quick enough. Typically birds, they're fine for 48 hours after they hatch because there's still enough of that yolk sac for them to get enough nutrition and uh, uh, hydration off of. They were just delayed. It was, it was, a, it was totally a post office deal. Yeah. Turkeys are very fragile. Turkeys are super fragile. When they're up to about six weeks old, from birth to about six weeks old, they'll find new and inventive ways to die. After about six weeks, they're bullfrogged. Yeah, they're pretty tough. They are pretty tough. Pay for that when that happens. I'm sorry. Who has to pay for that when that happens? So the hatchery, the hatchery actually covered it. For they us. did. Yep. Okay. The hatchery gave us. A, they they uh, gave us a credit. Did they credit a refund? Yeah, we will. Just a minute. They refunded us for 20 birds. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to keep in mind that they'll refund you or whatever. But then if you were counting on getting those birds, they've already sold all they've got. Yeah. <laughs> so you're out of luck. Is and, the and, downside. You know, a, a full-grown turkey processed retail is. You know, it's about a hundred dollars, no. or two thousand dollars we lost with those birds. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all see that? Those are just those are meat birds. That's good. Um, they follow the same process. Move forward the length of the tractor um, every day. Check feed and water. Those birds are due for processing in May the second. So those birds will will be going into the freezer. I don't remember. We bought them first of January. Yeah, I guess And so. you can see the size on them now. These birds out here are eight weeks old and they're three times the size. Yeah. <laughs> These are uh, primarily dorper. They're a hair sheep. Um, they do put on a coat of wool, but then they shed that wool. Uh, these sheep are primarily meat, <laughs> primarily meat sheep. Um, so we just had finished lambing season. Uh, uh, we were about uh, three to one boys to girls. So, which is okay. What we do with the boys is we'll band them, we'll castrate them, we'll grow them out to about a year old, and then we'll process them for for meat. All the girls, we'll keep the girls, we'll breed them back. Nah. We'll just continue to grow our flock like that. <laughs> An example of um, stacking enterprises, um, they were just one section over uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, the section that they were on, had just, we had just moved a group of pigs off of. So another example of how we had the pigs on the area, then we moved the sheep on the area, eventually we'll bring the chickens down and we'll put the chickens over there. <clears throat> This is Angel. She's our livestock guardian dog. She's a great Pyrenees. She's just a little bit over a year old. She's got a lot of puppy in her. She's very energetic. Um, Angel lives with the sheep. She stays with the sheep. She moves with the sheep. She eats with the sheep. She sleeps out here with the sheep. This is this is her home. This is where she stays. Angel came about because of a, a pretty tragic incident that we had last year. We had a coyote get in with our sheep and we lost about four lambs in one night. So the next day we went and found a great Pyrenees. Um, when she came, she was as about the size of one of those piglets out there. So she was just a little fluff ball. So she's been with us for about a year now, but she uh, we've not had knock on wood, we've had no coyote, no predator problems whatsoever since Angel's been here. And she does good with the heat. 
She does really well with heat, yeah. We try to give them a little bit of shade. You know, we know right now for the next couple days, and these girls, all this crowd will move tomorrow. Um, it's not gonna be hot today or tomorrow, so we don't worry too much about giving them much shade, but like, if we see it's gonna be hot over the next couple days, we'll put them in some trees. Gotcha. We'll make sure they've got some, they've got some shade. How do you move them when they're, when they're in this fence? Do you have another fence that you no, set up on, touch. like right yeah. beside of it? So what we'll do is we'll set up a new paddock where we're going to move the sheep and then we'll just come and call them and then they'll go with us. They'll walk, we can we can lead sheep. I can take these sheep to the beach with a bucket. Right. They'll, they'll really, they literally will follow you. Hey, sheep, 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 sheep. <laughs> and so when we're, when we're ready to go, we'll open that fence up. I'll call them and they'll just walk. They just walk right behind us and go where we want to go. The problem with moving the sheep is Angel. She wants to go everywhere. She's, she's like a, like a, a worm in hot ashes. She just, she goes everywhere. Did you have to do any special no. she, So she came from a, she came from a farm that had the Great Pyrenees on it. So she has genetics. Um, she, you know, she kind of loves her parents. Super right behind you. Come this side. So they have they put on wool during the year, but then they shed it. It's a very low quality. These are hair sheep. Okay. Yeah, they don't they don't have much wool at all. But we, and we don't even have to shear them. They, it just falls off okay. in clumps. Yeah. Sheep, sheep wool everywhere laying around here <laughs> during parts of the year. Hey, no, you're gonna stay down here with me. Yeah, so we chose them for a couple of reasons. Charlie, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, they are primarily a meat sheep. Oh, too close, Number two, they're fairly parasite resistant, so we don't have to do a lot of a lot of worm control on them. And they are very heat tolerant. Yeah, this all do this. is very heat tolerant. Y'all do do some worm control. Some worm control do, though, yeah, not the. Uh, who is it that does the no worm? Uh, Greg Judy. Yeah. Yep. No, we do. He's got a lot of space though. Yeah, there. he's got a lot of space. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do worm them, and then we also the moves, the frequent moves, right. we move them off of that, um, off of that area, so we give the parasite enough time to go through its entire life cycle before we bring them back, which is about 33, 34 days. Okay. So they don't hit. They don't. They don't go on the same spot twice in a month. Now, do the chickens eat those parasites? Does it kind of uh, work they, they like will. that? Mm -hmm. So yep, running sure. them behind helps. Yep. They're, they're an in. They're an in host. Gotcha. Yep, there in the and then right behind you is another group of, <laughs> is another group of gilts. These are female uh, female pigs that have not had uh, have not had babies yet. These girls here are all about six months old. In about a month, we'll put a boy in with them, and we'll we'll breed them for uh, we'll breed them. Bye. 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 Cindy. No, don't don't do that. Right. You look like Toby Dog. Aww. You do. You look like Toby Dog. Don't. Oh. 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 Okay. Come on. I didn't touch her. Too bad. We're gonna get one for our farm. <laughs> <laughs> He said they do uh, a couple different farmers markets. Clemens and High Point. Clemens one is right next to where I used to live. Nice. Look at that. It's fine. Bye, Angel. Bye. Booga, booga, booga. Tell Daddy what you just said. My legs. Oh, because you had to do something? <laughs> you had to get off the couch? <laughs> 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 
And there's patches of it everywhere. They were so they were here about six days ago. They were right here on this spot. Yep. And then Come over. Come over. Come over. Come over. Come over. Anything like this that's been recently grazed is not ready to go yet. So we're going to give this enough time to get back to this stage. And then we'll bring those sheep back and then they can have it again. So that's the beauty of being able to move those animals. We use that fence as kind of a steering wheel, a gas pedal, and a brake pedal put them exactly where we want them, when we want them there, mm -hmm. and that helps to keep our forage nice and fresh and get plenty of grass. Now, do you supplement the sheep at all? They're all grass? They're all grass. They're all grass. We do, we do supplement them in the winter right. uh, with hay and a little bit of grain, but this time of year, 100% grass. Yeah, so the thing I would do differently is I would pick one animal and learn that animal instead of trying to learn a bunch of animals at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Because I think we where we were trying to learn so we were we were initially all in on chicken. That's what we were gonna do. We were gonna focus on chicken. And then we decided we were gonna add pigs. So we at, we got our first batch of baby chicks and our first pigs in the same week okay. and zero experience so we had to learn <laughs> we had to learn them all at the same time so looking back i would have chosen one thing and learned that and then moved to the next thing yeah exactly i guess if you're rehabbing this land it helps to have more than it, it does you know. yeah and that's been that's been extremely helpful yeah. to mm -hmm. have the pigs and the chickens mm -hmm. and the turkeys and the sheep i mean right. all of those individually they're fantastic, but whenever you combine them and you start yeah. getting that synergy from one animal to the next, yeah. and really letting each of those, each one of those specific animals do what they do best, and you can start stacking that stuff, then it, it starts growing fast. Yeah. Where's the bathroom? Probably in the house. Mm -hmm. 